Uh, let's go on. Couples with children. So what are some couples with children? Um, these generally are a husband and a wife oh, with one or more children. Is. Um, when you're referring to married couples, oh, sorry, when referring to married couples, this is the traditional definition of family. Okay, it's not as traditional anymore. This was known as the nuclear family. Go back 50 years and that was pretty much your only definition of family. It was the nuclear family. Today there's a lot more. We're going to be looking at those. Um, in particular, also... Uh, unmarried couples. So an unmarried couple, even if they have a child, a de facto couple, would not have been considered a real family, traditionally. Today they are. And we're talking about couples with children, we're talking about married and unmarried. So 2010 again, 44% of families were couples married plus de facto with children. Here we have some examples. You've got the, the royal family, you know, the Duke and Duchess of York with their little baby, uh, George. Um, who were recently in Australia. Uh, Tony Abbott over here with his wife. And did you guys know he has three daughters? Yes. One of them. Yes. 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 There are there are two types of couples without children that you're going to be looking at. One is couples who have yet to have children, and the other is couples who have had children and the children have moved out. So elderly couples, often grandparents. Um, they can be married, like Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon Osbourne, whose kids have moved out, or they can be unmarried and never had kids, like Oprah Winfrey and Stedman over here. Yeah, because Oprah's secretly... There was a question? Yes? So you're still considered a couple that children, even if... just because they're not in the household? Yeah, so if the children have moved out, you're now a couple without children. So elderly couples are couples without children, because it's a household. <laughs> So for family, we really are looking at households. Once the children have moved out, they often create their own families or they move into single occupancy households and become alone, basically on their own, or in de facto relationships, um, or with couples, or with their own children. And again, this is 40% of families. Okay, so most families are couples with children or couples without children. And then you've got your single parent families. These are 14%. <laughs> that is a horrible story. A family with children but only one parent. So your examples are um, Bindi and Bob Owen and what was, what was their mom's name? Terry. Terry Owen and also Molly and Marlon and um, Nemo from Finding Nemo. Steve Owen's Steve Owen's dad. Steve Owen's dad. Bob's the kid. Yeah, Bob's the kid. Yeah, that's one with the Bob. Steve Owen's uh, son. Um, these can be a result of divorce, separation of de facto relationships, or death of one parent. So both of these cases were the death of a parent. So horrible, sir. Nemo. Um, in 2010, you had 14%. So it's 14% of families are single parent households. Most of them, four out of five of these, are single mothers. One fifth are single dads. Most of the single dads tend to be because of death. Generally, when you have divorce or separation, it's a single mother household that ends up taking care of the children. Uh, but 14%. 14% of families are single parents and predominantly single mothers. Let's go on to the next one. De facto couples. So called de facto couples. Here's some high profile ones. They're a couple living together. I don't even know the second one. As though they're married. So, um, uh, Enrique Iglesias and who's the Anna Kornikova, the tennis player? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they're a de facto couple. They're not married. They're I feel so sorry for the guy. Isn't um, he a hairdresser or something? They've, they may or may not have children. In rape, in no, the Jalibula guy. Oh, no, yeah, he's, he's a hairdresser. Is he a hairdresser? He's a hairdresser, yeah. He does her hair. <laughs> no wonder she looks so ugly. Yeah. Uh, so you, they may or may not have children. When we're talking about couples with children, couples without children, some of them are married, some of them are de facto. So the de facto couples, they're included in the statistics we've already looked at. But they do make up 15% of all couples. So 85% of couples are actually married. The majority of couples are still married couples, not de facto couples. Most uh, de facto couples do end up getting married this day and age. So the question was, at what point do you go from dating to becoming a de facto couple? Um, there's, there's no hard rule with this. Okay, Unlike marriage, unlike with marriage where you're married for as long as the point you're married to the point you get divorced, with de facto couples, there's all these sort of grey areas and rules. It's the, the rules that usually I hear is if you live together for two years and you share certain things. So if you have shared finances, for example, that's a very common one. Um, or if you're taking care of children together. Um, or if, you know, what level of decision making the couple makes together. If there's a certain threshold of that, 
you're considered a de facto couple. And usually it's two years of living together, but it's a gray area. And that's why for a lot of people they'll say, you know, this day and age, having de facto status gives you most of the same rights and obligations and privileges of being married. You're not guaranteed of getting de facto status. There's a gray area in there. In fact, getting married means you have those rights and privileges and obligations set in stone, and there's the legal protections of it. Um, but those rights and obligations do extend to de facto couples if you meet the criteria for it. But like in many things in the law, it's more of a gray area. Okay, blended families. So what's a blended family? That's a couple married or de facto um, with children from a previous relationship. Okay, the ABS definition. The ABS definition actually requires the couple to have a child between them as well. So in, in other words, half siblings. But blended families usually when you have uh, a couple who are getting married who have children from a previous relationship. That's the easy way to remember it. So things like uh, The Brady Bunch. I don't know if you guys know that show anymore. All the way from the 60s. Um, dad and, and, and a mum, they used to get married, they each have three kids. It's a blended family. Um, Will Smith, he has, I think his eldest son is from a previous relationship. You know, um, and his two, son. two youngest children are with his um, current wife. Um, extended families, so someone mentioned grandparents, cousins, uncles earlier. Okay, that's relatives other than parents yeah, usually. So uncles, aunts, yeah. grandparents, cousins, etc. Um, who, who knows what the relationship here is? There's foster parents. Foster parents? So do you, do you guys know who that is, right? No. Uh, Barack Obama. Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson. It's Barack Obama. Who knows who these people are? I didn't know he was adopted. <laughs> That's his grandparents. <laughs> his mother was white. His dad was African. Oh, yeah. Okay, like I can't even. Like, he's a halfy. Okay, so he's he's yeah he's he's a mixed race. Um, his grandparents actually raised him from the age of ten till the age of eighteen because his mother was living in Indonesia. So he was sent back to, I think it was Kenya. Hawaii. What, what nationality is he? He's half Kenyan, half um, white American. Isn't he Islamic or something as well? No, no, he's Christian. Okay. Um, his grandparents effectively raised him from the age of 10 <laughs> to 18 while his mother was away in Indonesia. Um, his mother died in the 90s, um, and these were his last remaining ancestors. His grandmother died on, if I remember correctly, the 3rd of November 2008, which was the day before he was elected president. God damn. Um, and that was his last remaining ancestor. So, so she nice. did not live to see him get elected the first black president of the United oh, States by one day. Heavy days. It so was. Family's family rare? These, um, these, these are quite rare today. Is in extended families living together in the same household. So everyone has uncles and aunts and grandparents, but uh, other than a granny flat with you know a grandparent living out the back or the occasional uncle or aunt living with someone for a short period of time, you don't tend to get, you know, a pack to the rafters sort of situation with everyone living together under the same household, particularly for prolonged periods of time. It used to be more common. That yeah. happen a lot more, say, if one member of the family hits like hard times. It does, even then, so it does happen when one member hits hard times. That tends to only be for short periods of time, though. Hey, you know, Uncle Bob is moving in for a couple of months until he gets his life back on track. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's such a good Good example. So, same-sex couples. So, same-sex couples can be um, yes, female, what? female same-sex couples like Ellen DeGeneres and Morshin Rossi, or uh, male same-sex couples like Timon and Pumbaa. So they're not gay. They're not gay. That's I'm, a joke. So you're you're cruel. Yes, it's you ruined my childhood. I've ruined your childhood. I'll get to it in a second. Timon and Pumbaa are not. Okay, in, in the, the census, the last census. <laughs> The last census, there were just over 30,000 same-sex couples measured in the last census. That was 0.7% of all couples. Um, a lot of same-sex couples do not put down their status as same-sex couples, so this figure is probably understated, but it's probably not understated by a huge amount. So it's still a very small minority of um, all couple relationships are same-sex couples today, but it's, it's a fast-growing one. This is growing quite rapidly. Uh, most of them do that children, so they tend to be couples without children. And those who do have children tend to be female. 22% of female um, same-sex couples have children, 3% of male children. Um, so some, most female same-sex couples, like Ellen and uh, Portia de Rossi, they're more likely to have children. They don't actually have children. So some same-sex couples don't have children. Some of them, like Timon and Pumbaa, do have children. How did Timon and Pumbaa have children? They, they adopted uh, Simba and raised him. You guys saw the movie, right? The Lion King? I know. Yeah. He was raised by a same-sex couple. Yeah. That's they were mates. They were mates, sir. What is the a lot of same-sex couples. It's such a horrible troll. 
I'm joking. That's <coughs> All right. Um, indigenous marriages. This one is included because <coughs> indigenous marriages are married under customary tribal law. The reason this is important is they don't fit with European traditions of marriage, and so they're not recognised under the Marriage Act, 1961. Um, that's going to come in quite a bit. We're going to be looking a bit at the Marriage Act, um, 1961, and the Family Law Act, 1975. In terms of family relationships, those two are quite important. Because they're not recognised under the Marriage Act, they're often recognised as de facto relationships, so that's where they get those um, same rights and obligations. But they're not, because it's a different culture, they're not recognised as having the same European tradition, so they don't fit under the same, um, uh, the same criteria as traditional marriage in the European sense. And we're going to be looking at that a little bit more. Question? Is that a problem for children that are given birth to a de facto relationship? Um, to an extent, but because de facto relationships have essentially all the same um, rights and obligations domestically as um, a formal marriage, it's not as much of an issue. Um, where de facto relationships do come into some trouble is when you go to another country. Because another country may not recognise your de facto relationship, whereas they would recognise one that says, here's a you know, marriage certificate. So that it is still not the same as a marriage. So if any of you, you know, 10, 20 years from now say, I'm in a de facto relationship, I don't need to get married, there is still benefits of getting married. Um, non family households, let's just talk about this very briefly. Families are the vast majority of households, they're 74%. But you have non-family households. non uh, lone person households are the majority of those, 23%, but also share accommodation households are 3%. Um, and in particular, the lone person and childless family households are the big growth area. So at the moment, you've got couples with children, they're the biggest. About 2.5 million couples without children come next, just over 2 million. Lone person households are quite small, at 1.86 million. In the next 25 years or 20 years, lone person households are going to become quite large, 3.6 million, and couples without children also quite large, whereas couples with children are going to fall slightly. So you're seeing this big growth in lone person and couples without children households. Couples with children, that's actually a falling demographic, and that's for various reasons. People are having children later in life or they're not having children at all, or children are moving out of home, things like that. It's interesting changes in um, what is happening with families. Um, the, the, before I move on to children specifically, the main thing you need to be taking from this is the idea that what was the traditional idea of family, that was the nuclear family, how is that concept different today and how does that fit into how we think families are now, how is that changing into the future? You know, are same-sex couples now considered families? 10, 20, 30 years ago the answer would have been no. Today most people would say yes. Into the future, um, same-sex marriages are quite likely to become part of the law as well. So children. Um, children in family are no longer restricted to those naturally conceived by both parents. It now includes things like stepchildren. So they're not naturally conceived between the two parents. One parent has a child, they get married to someone else, um, that becomes a stepchild. Children conceived artificially, primarily IVF. Um, let me just go through these and I'll go to your question. So children carried by a surrogate mother. So it's similar to these two coming together. So a woman may not be able to um, go through with a pregnancy, but she'll give her egg and another mother will carry the baby, give birth and then hand that baby over to the, um, the natural parents or the biological parents. Um, adopted children and foster children. Um, before I go to your question, does anyone know the difference between these two? What's the difference between adopted children and foster children? Daniel had his hand up. No. No? Um, yes? Adopted is like, they're actually your child and foster, they just live with you for a little bit. Oh. Okay, that's, that's pretty much it, that's right. So adopted children, um, you take on the legal rights and obligations of an actual child. Yeah, um, foster children, quite often they're living with someone for shorter periods of time. Foster children can become adopted children, and often that happens when they're with them for a long period of time.